I'm so glad I bought this. I can't give it a full 10 because I feel like they could have had more types of things. I can't stand the rain against my window. Hello and welcome back to my channel. Uh, long time no see for a sit down video. I am so excited to film this right now. It's kind of inspired by a video I posted last year around this time. Uh, it was a Target haul. I'll link it in the cards here. In that video, it was just a general Target haul, but I had also bought from Target's Black History Month collection, which is always something that I make sure to check out every year because they be showing out low key. Like they kind of go crazy on the Black History Month selection. So we're gonna we're gonna review it this year because. I kind, I kind of couldn't resist. I saw it in the app. I do use the Target app because I'm just an avid Target shopper, all right? So I did go into the store. You know, I went for general shopping, but also had in my heart that I wanted to do this video. And when I walked up to the section and saw what all they had to offer in person, since I had already seen it in the app, it was, you know, I don't know. It felt like... Like I was called to so many things. And believe it or not, this is not everything from that section. As you can see uh, from what I'm showing on screen now, you're not going to see everything that you're seeing now in this haul. Mostly because I tried to only get things that I really liked, even though I liked almost everything. But I didn't want to just have a bunch of stuff. So this is not... Ooh, shiny. So some of this stuff I got as gifts, even because I wanted to be able to review it and you know show you guys the stuff and like tell you about the quality and everything but every I didn't want to have to keep everything for myself so a lot of this stuff will well not a lot of it actually a lot of it is for me but some of these pieces will be gifts as well so the first section that I hit up was the clothing so let's get into that first so the first clothing item I got was this t-shirt and this was actually the only one of the t-shirts that I did get so this is black and legendary gray t-shirt with pink and white writing and this is from the brand legendary roots these are all black owned brands of course and legendary roots was founded by Raven Gibson uh, to empower liberate and uplift black culture worldwide her innovative and vibrant apparel accessories and home decor designs are created to inspire the African diaspora to embrace their heritage and show their pride with confidence. And you know, that's, they have the history printed on each tag, but I will also put on the screen if you'd like to read or screenshot anything. So this is the first piece I got. Very soft. It's a soft tee. It's like a relaxed fit. More for me, this would be more loungewear, but I actually intend to give this as a gift. I love the the colorway is very like cute, but kind of also sophisticated to me. And you know, black and legendary is just you know vibes. <laughs> but I do I really like this tee, and it does feel like good quality and very soft fabric. So the second piece that I got <clears throat> was this button up, which I am a lover of button ups. <clears throat> And this one has so many, like it's a cream color with, and the pattern is people, like black people, you'd have to assume given it's a black history month, but there's so many different scenes and so much for the eye to catch that, you know, I don't know, it, it just, it gives black people in the summer. Like that's, that's the theme I would say of this tea, black people on an island even because there's palm trees and like you can see fam a family and standing in front of a car and there's so many different things for your eye to see and I feel like I just keep seeing new things it is a nice material I believe is this 100% cotton it feels cotton does it say H.O. in Bangladesh 100% cotton yep yeah so this very nice button up and all of their like button ups and stuff all like all of the non-t-shirt pieces like even the t-shirts i would say would still be unisex but some of those are more geared like they kind of either were feminine or masculine looking but all of their more major pieces 
are advertised as being unisex and this i believe they're the buttons are on the men's side because you know for men and women like shirts button the opposite way i believe the buttons are the man's direction for buttoning but it is unis advertised as unisex which i truly appreciate because i actually like wearing men's button-ups and men's clothes in general so this button-up is very nice very good quality and 100 percent cotton so it's breathable then the third clothing piece that i have here is this button up so this i think could be worn as a full-on button-up shirt because it kind of gives work shirt um so it's a black button up on the front it says black all day um and i'm uh, on the front or no that was the front on the back <laughs> it says black all day every day period okay period no choice but to be black all day every day but this feels it, it gives work shirt like it's a it has work shirt vibes with the little with the printing on the front like breast area the front left breast area or chest area but like the breast of the shirt this might also be 100 percent cotton and did i tell you the designer on this so actually let's circle back to this cream top i didn't even tell you the the uh designer for this one so this is house of ama a-a-m-a -A -A, house of ama and it was designed by Rebecca and Akura. Sisters, maybe? Let's read. Based in Los Angeles, California, and founded by mother, mother daughter. Oh my God, I said twins, and they're, or sisters, and they're mother daughter. Mother daughter duo, Rebecca Henry and Akua Shak, Shabak, Shabaka. S H A B A K A. House of Ama explores the folk folk ways of the black experience by designing timeless garments with nostalgic references informed by historical research family legacy and storytelling house of ama aims to invoke the storyteller within you that is definitely what this gives but circling back to this particular top the black top black all day every day this just says the tag on here doesn't have a particular designer it just says designed by a black target team artist and then it just had the Black History Month tag on it. And I actually intended to be giving you prices on these things while I was going through them. The t-shirt was 15. It's the like scenery button up 30. And then this black button up is 30 as well. So uh, pretty consistent across the pricing for the tops here. And then the last clothing piece is actually the jacket that I'm wearing right now. So this quilted jacket is amazing. And I have to say is my favorite clothing piece. And this was designed by, uh, created in collaboration with the quilters of G's Bend in Boykin, Alabama. Boykin, Alabama, Wilcox County. And that, like, I just love that this is from Alabama because that's where uh, my parent, my dad's family is from. And here is our designer, Delia, Delia Thibodeau or Delia maybe Delia Thibodeau and it just says Delia Thibodeau is a G's Bend quilter and namesake of her her grandmother Delia Bennett she learned to quilt from the wo the women in her family and just like them doesn't like to waste a scrap of fabric this piece is definitely my favorite and it was $35 which I'd have to say the price difference between the top and this, like this jacket, I feel like could easily be like a $50, $60, $70 dollar jacket for $35. That's actually a really good price. That is actually the last piece of clothing. And now we can shift into accessories. One of her accessories. So same designer, same brand, the G's Bend, but there's this quilted bag. So quilted tote bag. The straps are quilted and like filled, like they're puffy stuffed. And the bag is the same pattern as the jacket, but obviously it's still unique because it's quilted. So none of the pieces are exactly the same. When I was, I literally, like I picked this jacket intentionally because of its distribution of colors. And I don't even think they had very many of these bags left. When I got to it, mind you, I went to Target what, January 31st, like it wasn't even Black History Month yet, and the section was already starting to get light. So if you have interest in any of these pieces, I say get to Target as soon as possible. But this bag is, it's just beautiful. And also my favorite color primarily, which is green, if you cannot tell. I don't know, you probably can't tell that my background is green. It kind of just looks black on camera. But yes, this bag 
It feels very good quality, thick, heavy duty, like you could carry quite a bit in here. Yeah, this bag is very cute and to go with the jacket, like kind of a no-brainer, to be honest. Sorry, the framing changed at all. My battery was dying and I just changed it. But okay, our next accessory, this hat. So this is a hat that is meant to accommodate natural hair. I actually bought a, a hat similar, well, the same style, but a, a different hat last year from their Black History Month collection. And I'm actually wearing it in the thumbnail of the video that I tagged uh, in the cards at the beginning of this video. And I, I love that. I don't wear hats very often because I have, let's just say that I am blessed in the dome department, okay? So most hats don't fit me. This, these hats, they're elastic in the back and also they snap shut. So like you have two options for the snaps to make it bigger and it's elastic. I also, I do have natural hair pardon in the try on my headband wig that I put on with this hat, but I wanted to kind of simulate natural hair coming out of the back of this because that is the intention I would say is to be able to wear your natural hair in an Afro state out of the back of your hat. And I just love this style of hat and the design is so cute. The melanin with the sun moon mo motif and like even the font. I just really, this is a great hat and it is satin lined. This is a satin lined hat. So protective for the natural hair. And last but not least, the final accessory I have, I am actually wearing, which is these, hold on, pick earrings. These are so much cuter on than I anticipated. Like I didn't expect to like these as much as I do. I got them because they're part of the collection. But when I put them on, I was like, oh wait, these are actually really cute. And I forgot prices again. The bag price was 25 for the bag. The hat was $13. And this was also just designed by a black target team artist. It doesn't say who the designer actually was. And then for these earrings, these are Legendary Roots again. So the same brand as uh, this, as the t-shirt in the beginning, these earrings are the same, are from the same brand. So Legendary Roots, and these were $10. I will give you one caveat, they are heavy. So if you have sensitive earlobes, that might be an issue. I, Got, like when I first put them on, I'm like, oh, these kind of hurt. But now that I've had them on for a while, I'm kind of used to them. They do not feel heavy anymore, but they are heavy. So keep that in mind, but they're so cute. So that is it for clothing and accessories. And now we'll move into streetwear specifically. I got this tumbler, which is actually the same brand as my quilted jacket and the bag here by Delia Thibodeau from G's Bend. You know, it's the same pattern, same quilted pattern. It has the a clear straw, you know, insulated. It's really cute. It's kind of giving, this is going to be my going out in the summer little beverage container. Cause I have my everyday water cup, but if I want to drink something else, I have a feeling it's going to go in here. And then, oh, and price on that is, do we not have a price? Oh no, don't tell me we don't know the price. I have my receipt. I will put the price for the tumbler on the screen. I'm assuming it was probably a similar price to this, but we, I'm not sure. But we do have a, another tumbler here, but this is more of a traditional style straw and cup combo. And it actually has the same, wording that is printed on this t-shirt which is black and legendary it's you know one of those double walled tumblers your typical tumbler pink and white black history month it says and it is from the same brand legendary roots so the t-shirt the cup and the earrings are all from the same brand and then last but not least in drinkware we actually have a drinkware set so this comes with a wine glass and a a mug the mug is literally my aesthetic plants books natural hair black woman like it's giving it's like i'm vibing with the motif of this mug and then the wine glass says i don't give a sip okay i don't give one 
And this is, oh, did I even tell you how much this was? This was $9.99. The tumbler was $9.99. I need to get it together. <laughs> but then, oh, and the price isn't on this either. So I'll have to put the price on screen for this as well. But this is from the brand Be Rooted, which is different than the Legendary Roots. But this is called the Wake Up to Wind Down Mug and Wine Glass <clears throat> Set. Wake Up to Wind Down. That's cute. I didn't read that part. I just saw the wind down part. Now I'm seeing the Wake Up to Wind Down. Interesting. Yeah, this is very cute. And that is it for drinkware. Next we are going to roll into Art and Stationery. So the first thing I have here is this pack of prints. So there are four prints in here, which you can see from the picture. And I have not opened these. All I've seen is what is here, and they are from the art the artist Winnie Weston. Think Ink by Design Works Inc. So Winnie Weston, and then there is a QR code here. I'm assuming for more information on the artist, but I'm gonna just pull these out of the package with you all because I didn't do that previously. Oh, they feel good. They're printed on like cardstock. So here is one of the prints. The woman holding a bouquet. Or, yeah, I think that's that one. Then we have, this one kind of reminds me of Tracy Ellis Ross. Pink, green, orange motif. Love her pants in this pic. This is very cute. It's kind of giving AKA vibes. But, you know, I don't know if that was the intention. Probably not, given the rest of these are not D9 colors. Very stylish women in these images. And then a group photo. Are these the same women? No, they're different women. How cute would that have been, though? If this was, like, all of them plus one. But yeah, this is a cute one as well. What size are these? These are 5 by 7 Do I have 5 by 7 frames? Because I, I could see myself framing these and doing a wall grouping with these. Very cute, though. Very cute prints by Winnie Weston. And the, they're, like, they're kind of textured. So they feel really good quality as well. Good quality prints. Then, from the Be Rooted brand, so the same brand as the Wake Up to Wind Down set, is this planner. So it says take up space, and it looks like two women dancing. And then if you flip through it, you know, there's the page that says this planner belongs to. And then every page in here after that is the same, but for each day you can write out the date, your schedule from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m., then your meal plan for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, there's a section down here to track your water intake, uh, top three priorities, a to-do list, and then a notes section. So, and I really like the fact that you get to write the date in yourself because I am the type that, you know, I'm kind of inconsistent with using a planner. So if I have a planner that already has the dates printed in it, then that means there will be a lot of pages that I have to skip. So I really like when planners let you put your own date on each page. So I say that that's definitely a plus for this particular planner and then you know good quality you have the band to close it to keep everything together and there's 160 pages in here take up space as you should then we have so this is also from the be rooted brand a wall calendar it is a zodiac wall calendar 12 month calendar for 2024 it is so full page calendar with spiral bounding so you can hang it and then you know you you don't have to because i have i usually use the calendars where it's like you know a traditional calendar where you have the, the hole where you can pin it up but then when you want to turn the page you kind of unpin it open it up pin it back you don't have to do that with this you can literally just unhook the whole calendar and put it on the hook and then these are all the different motifs and scenes that you would see for each month. I did not open this. Oh, where's my, where's my, where's my, oh, here it is, my cutter. I'm going to open it now because I am keeping this for myself because I needed a 2024 calendar. And unfortunately, I will not be getting to look at this page once it's hung because we're already in February. It's currently Fe February 2nd as I'm filming this. So it is Black History Month. Oh, this is very nice. So like there's like foil embossing of the text and it's textured, like you can feel it. So the gold foil embossing, 
My only <laughs> complaint with this calendar was that February gets the Pisces, but I am a Pisces, but I was born in March, and March has Aries, which I guess is fine, but not ideal. But this is a very nice calendar. Let's see. Oh, this is just a, a piece of cardboard here to keep it sturdy and stable. But yeah. Oh, can I get the thing back out? There you go. And you hang it right here by your little loop. Oop, come on, stay up. There you go. So February. Oh, yeah, and today is Groundhog Day. I actually didn't see if uh, Puck Satomi saw his, uh, saw his shadow. Lunar New Year on the 10th, Valentine's Day, and President's Day. So you got the holidays printed on there. Yeah, this is, this is a nice calendar. And now we have quite a few things, quite a few of the same type of thing. So there was a section in the Black History Month section for cards, like greeting cards, birthday cards, thinking of you cards. So I'm going to go through each one of them and show you the artwork and the inside. So the first one that I have here is kind of like a pampering motif and it says, it's you season. On the inside it says, nurture your glow and revive your vibe because you deserve it sis. Happy birthday. And these, this is Winnie Weston is the artist for this card. I don't know if they all have different artists. I actually didn't pay attention to that before because I wasn't looking at the back. This is Winnie Weston as well. So this says, you are the moment. Love how you carve out your space and do it so gracefully. So this is kind of just like a thinking of you card, maybe even a congratulations card. Then we have, okay, so this is a different artist. This is Shannon Cohen, Tough Skin, Soft Heart. Shannon Cohen is a natural encourager, wordsmith, and handwritten note connoisseur. Shannon loves helping difference makers thrive at the intersection of joy and purpose. Her Tough Skin Soft Heart product line was created to inspire, uplift, and encourage. This is Happy Birthday Queen. The Queen in Me admires, respects, loves, sees, celebrates, and cherishes the Queen in You. Happy Birthday. I already know who I'm giving this to. And that was another thing when I was going through this section. I, it was so easy for me to justify getting so many because I'm like, this is going to keep me from having to buy cards in the future. <laughs> So the next one we have here is, so this just says Black History Month. This card was created in heartfelt collaboration with black artists, writers, and members of the African, of the American Greetings African American Resource Network to celebrate black history and the leaders who shaped it. We hope it makes you feel uplifted, supported, and celebrated all year long. And this card says, it's a beautiful day to be black. And on the inside it says, and an even better day to celebrate you. Happy birthday. <laughs> It is a beautiful day to be black. This one, no who I'm giving this one to as well. And this, uh, oh, we have a male artist this time, Emmanuel Wisdom. Ooh, what a name, Emmanuel Wisdom. Emmanuel Wisdom is a multidisciplinary artist, letterer, and creative designer based in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And it says, today a king was born. Beautiful font. And on the inside it says, keep rocking that crown. Happy birthday. Love that. Love this. I love this card. Like the the motif of this card is beautiful and it just, all of it feels black because it's all black. <laughs> okay. And then this card are, oh, I, I'm going to mess up this last name. Ruth Njenga. Uh, Njenga. I don't know if I'm saying that correctly, but Ruth Njenga is a professional painter and illustrator born in Kenya and raised in the UK. Her paintings and drawings are inspired by her African heritage and reflect peace, growth, and self-love. And this card says, a phenomenal woman doing phenomenal things. That's you all day, every day. Happy birthday. Love that. <clears throat> then we have Another a, a new artist, Nicole Miles. Nicole Miles was born in the USA, grew up in the Bahamas, and now lives in the UK, illustrating for books, magazines, TV, and other fun visual products or projects. Pardon me. There she is. There's Nicole, who has lived all over the world. Your potential is limitless, birthday boy. Dream big and do cool stuff. You know, 
like you always do. That's so cute. Know who that's going to as well. Okay, our next card. Do we have a new artist? Nope, this one just says Black History Month with the same inscription as before. I love you for real, for real. Just thought I'd let you know. Very pretty motif. It's kind of, I don't know. Um, it's like, I don't know, the psychedelic almost. Almost. Last but not least for the cards, we have Emmanuel Wisdom coming back around. All right, and he has, through thick and thin, you're always there good looking out i love when i opened this card and saw that it said good looking out i'm like there is no way i'm not picking this up and i also know who this is going to to be honest so that is it for the stationery and art section then we are on to books and games this is lyrically correct a music trivia game 90s and 2000s hip hop R&B edition. So it's just a little card game. And the examples on the back is, what did Destiny's Child ask you to pay? Enter your answers now. Correct answer, their bills. <laughs> uh, and then Wu-Tang said, cash rules what? A, the world. B, everything in the country. B, I mean C, Excuse me. Everything around me. D. All of that. <clears throat> Cash rules everything around me. Cream. Dollar dollar bill, y'all. This just seems like a very fun game to play, especially in my family, because we all burst into song whenever, like, whenever opportunity arises, which is all the time. A song will be sung. I'm gonna open this though, because I did not open it before. And I like the way it opens. It's like a little drawer. And you have the cards. What those cards look like. Lyrically correct. And look, they didn't do it the way other games have done where they print the rules on a card. They actually have like a little instruction page. Let's see. Game set up and play. Players are divided into two teams. Team A and B. Each team takes a color set of challenge. What? Of challenge cards. Oh, there's different. Oh, so this is even more interesting than I realized. Hold on. Okay, challenge cards. Challenge cards. The, the remaining 115 cards should be shuffled and placed in a pile between both teams. Each team selects one player to represent their team per round. The round is complete when each of these two players has both asked and answered a series of game card questions. The round begins with the player from Team A selecting a question card from the pile. 60 second timer begins when the player from Team A begins reading the questions to the player from Team B. The player answering the. Seven, the player answering the gameplay questions will attempt to answer as many questions correctly as possible before the 60, 60 seconds are up. Each time a question is answered correctly, the card is placed into a pile. Only the player selected for each gameplay round may answer the questions asked. The answering, number eight, the answering player may pass if they are unsure of, the, of an answer. If a player passes or answers incorrectly, that card is placed in a separate pile. A new card is selected if the round continues. Players then switch roles and team B reads the question card and team A answers. So what's the challenge card for? Clearly direct is a verbal gameplay with two teams of one or more players on each team. A deck of 115 cards, 10 challenge cards in a timer. We suggest using the timer on your mobile phone. Using challenge cards. Okay, here we go. A challenge card can be used against the opposing team at any time during the game. Each team can only use one challenge card per round. Anyone on the team may issue a challenge card while the, that team is, is, is the questioning team. Example, if the person representing team B is reading the cards, any member of team B may issue a challenge card after a question is answered. When a challenge card has been issued, the 60 second game timer is paused. A new 30 second timer begins once the challenge card is read. Unlike the game cards, challenge questions are issued to the entire team and everyone may answer. If answers correctly, the team gets three points. If answered incorrectly or time runs out, the opposing team gets three points. Each challenge card may only be used once per game. Scoring. When it comes to your to the answers, you can be as precise as you want. It's up to you. As for us, we prefer to go with the flow. Remember, it's all about the vibe. At the end of each player's turn, points are, ta are tallied. Each card stacked in the correct pile represents one point for the team. Each card stacked in the incorrect pile slash pass pile represents a negative point deduction for the team. So, challenge cards are worth three points. If answered correctly, the team gets the points. If answered incorrectly or time runs out, the opposing team gets the points. When all cards have been read, the team with the most points is declared the winner. All cards have been read? I think you can pick and choose when you quit. So, I'm gonna read you some of the cha the challenges. So, name two songs by this artist. So, I'm guessing by the artist from the question. Whatever question was asked. Finish the next line of the song. Okay. What year did this song come out? I would never get that right. What album was this song on? Probably wouldn't get that right either. Where is this artist from? Probably wouldn't get that right either. <laughs> the challenge cards are hard. All right, I kind of want to pop in on one of these and see what I what I can do. <laughs> what couldn't Missy stand against her window? I can't stand the rain. 
against my window. <laughs> I can't stand the rain. All right. Yeah, this is... I see. That's what I mean. This is gonna hit. Ooh, I can't wait to play this. Family, where you at? Stop by. Come through. It's game night. It's game night. Uh, oh my gosh. All right. This next thing, I'm going to preface by describing it as woo-woo. This might be polarizing to some, but they did have a black tarot deck. I do use Oracle decks. I have never owned a tarot deck. And when I saw this on the Target app, I was immediately intrigued. The artwork on the box is beautiful. Excuse the 30% off sticker. I don't even know if I actually got 30% off, but that would have been nice. I hope I did. I gotta check the receipt. Prices are on the screen. Black Tarot deck, an Ancestral Awakening deck and guidebook. Couldn't see it. By Nayasha Williams. And it says, let the spirits guide you. Awaken ancestral ties and connect to the divine with Black Tarot, a deluxe tarot deck and guidebook set from author Nayasha Williams. Featuring and celebrating exclusively black figures and in imagery, this deluxe set includes 78 full-color tarot cards and a 144-page full-color illustrated guidebook and keepsake box. So you can kind of see on the back here some of the artwork. You open it, there's magnetic. Here is the book. And it's actually like, like at least with my Oracle decks, it's the book is typically... And this is kind of probably a weird thing to even notice, but like usually it's the type of book where it is paperback and the pages are flush with the outside, but these, this is different. It's more like hardcover style where the cover of the book extends past the pages. I don't know. For some reason that stood out to me as like being of higher quality or at least more time investment for the quality. Um, but yeah, so this is the guidebook. Written by Nyasha Williams, illustrated by Kimbishka Nadu. Nado. And then I did not actually open the deck, which is in the bottom here. And I am gonna do that now because I kinda wanna, you know, let's take a looky. Oh look, see, I don't want to damage the box though. Thank you. And then I'm just gonna come in this way because I wanna be able to open it this way. Yeah, that would have ripped if I would have tried to do that. We're gonna close that back. <laughs> and they are shrink wrapped together. Bottom card is the fool. So I will also say that I'm not well versed in the meaning of tarot cards. I know very little about some of them, but the guidebook has that information in it. So if you are interested or are interested, then this is an option for you. This, I hope it's not a hot take, but a lot of times when it comes to like divination tools or tools that are linked to spiritual practice, my preference is that they be from the Three of Wands, is three black women, um, that they be rooted in some sort of blackness. Um, <laughs> And that's just, you know, because I know, I don't know. It seems like I have a better understanding of the intentions behind spirituality and black culture. I guess the, the, the diaspora as a whole. So the fact that this deck is all black imagery makes it a lot more, I guess, relatable for me. Two of knives and it's black woman yoga pose with swords above her five of knives well there are five five knives in the image yeah i'm i'm really digging these the artwork on these is some temperance i did not know that, that was a card see that's the thing i don't know 144 cards there's got to be a lot of things in here i would say but temperance is i'm trying to figure out what's happening here it looks like painting kind of maybe it looks like she's holding a paintbrush with but there's also pots and pans, so is she cooking? I can't really tell. Daughter of Wands, traveling in the airport, and there's a clock behind her. Alright, but that's just some of the examples of the cards that are in this, of the imagery of the cards on this deck. If you're familiar with tarot, all the cards are going to be basically the same, I would say, like the names of the cards. But the imagery is what's what makes this deck unique. I look forward to 
working with this deck and seeing what comes of it. Black Terra. And price is on the screen. Don't know if I said that already, but if I didn't, it's here it is. This is, I mostly say that out loud. It's a reminder for me in editing to put it on the screen. <laughs> Last but not least for the game section, a cook, the game and book section, I should say, is a cookbook. So this is the Ghetto Gastro Black Power Kitchen Cookbook. I also did not open this and it's shrink wrap. They had one that wasn't, but for some reason I ended up with the one that was. Ghetto Gastro Black Power Kitchen by John Gray, Pierre Sarau, and Lester Walker. Um, part cookbook, part manifesto, created with Big Bronx Energy, Black Power Kitchen combines 75 flavor-packed, mostly plant-based recipes with immersive storytelling, diverse voices, and striking images of to celebrate black food and black culture and provoke larger conversations about race, history, food, and inequality, and how eating well is a tool for self-empowerment. The African American flag, I believe is what this is. And then on the front, oh, same thing on the inner cover. This is very black. <laughs> let's see. I'm just gonna, let's go to the first page. So authors, John Gray, Pierre Sorrell, and Lester Walker with Osai Indolin, forward by Dr. Jessica B. Harris, photography by Naquan Schuler and Joshua Woods. I'm gonna give all these names uh, their time to shine. I wanna say them out loud. Ghetto Gastro in the Black Power Fist on the back. Dedication to our families, especially our mothers, Denise, Roxanne, and Elizabeth. Oh, Elizabeth is my middle name and my grandmother's name. Uh, to the community that nur the communities that nurture and inspire us, and to our ancestors who blaze the trail, peace to to the gods and the earths. Do rag diplomacy, <laughs> rebels with a cause. Dear Mama, eyes on the prize. Pantry resources and acknowledgement and index. That's the table of contents. I'm going to read the top bolded quote here because I just feel like I need to share something from in here. Food is often taken to be a neutral topic of conversation, something to talk about with colleagues or strangers while avoiding the, con the contentions that may come with deeper topics like politics or religion. But in the African-American world, food has always been a difficult subject, one that brings with it a history of struggle and strife, one that can evoke generations of want and decades of pain. Ooh. Hey. What is this? Food is a weapon printed in what looks like spray paint graffiti. We are Ghetto Gastro. Welcome to our power kitchen. I'm guessing these are our authors here. The enslaved, not the slaves. Mm. Chopped steams. Green for the money juice. Coco Loco. Seafood City Jade's Palace. An interview with ASAP Ferg. What? Try Burro Tres Leches and Nutcracker. What is a chopped steams? Makes four sandwiches. Plant based. So it's a, a plant based chopped cheese. I might have to. What are you doing? And they still you to use things that are other recipes. There's an aioli on here. A aquafaba aioli. Which. Alfalfa is the water from chickpeas? Or is it a chickpea? Something like that. Stewed sea bass and cuckoo? Coco? Cuckoo? C O U C O U? I don't know. This is a very. And the imagery, like the pictures. Like, I'm kind of hungry and kind of want to cook something, but now I need to go get me some ingredients, is what it's giving. Twerking jerk. Where Jamaicans go, so goes jerk. This style of cooking emerged from the mountainous regions of Jamaica where the Maroons, see page 96, established their secret impenetrable communities. Twerk sauce. They really, it's a recipe for basically jerk sauce. Make the dry jerk seasoning, wet jerk seasoning. Oh, they really doing it in here. Like, they really doing it. Shufa coquito. Look, they even we cross cultural in here, okay? We had the trace leches, the coquito. I think coquito is Puerto Rican, if I'm not mistaken. 
curry chickpeas. This is in the do rag diplomacy section now. I'm very, like, enthralled and in, like intrigued by this book. I'm so glad I bought this. Dal puri roti, rotis. I'm trying to because this is there's so many. It's so cross cultural. Because wow. All right. Love this. Love this. Digging in the curry with cauliflower rice. D I T C. Digging in the curry. With very well traveled features. Wrote this book. This is Fifth City Karage. I actually just had karage chicken last night for dinner, but it was like frozen from Trader Joe's. Tea. But uh, interesting that this is here because it was delicious, but I don't know what didn't agree with me. So now I have a recipe to make it myself. That's kind of lit. I knew I tasted lemon, lemon and orange, ginger, garlic, apple cider vinegar, honey, shoyu, and vodka are what make the marinade. Roasted breadfruit gnocchi. Yeah, I'm loving that these are plant-based. Oh my, am I about to be vegan? What's happening? Um, coconut ceviche. I said I, I told you I do Oracle, I, like I use Oracle decks. I have a plant, plant medicine Oracle deck and I keep getting the card, uh, plant-based, what is it? Plant, it's not plant-based diet, but like plant-based nutrition? Plant, something to that effect. Well, basically, it keeps my deck keeps telling me I need to uh, lean more towards a plant-based diet. So this is really up my alley. I'm sorry, I'm focusing so long on this, but like I am so intrigued. That's so like there's a pantry section where it basically shows you how to make your own things that are shelf stable that you can keep for longer than a day or two. Some in here say it's, it lasts up to three months. Aunt Millie's Greens Sofrito. How to make chili oil, lemongrass oil, ginger oil. And the illustrations are so, so black, of course. Not your one with your long nails and designs and things. Ghetto Gastro in the Bronx Born Culinary Collective from John Gray, Pierre Sorrell, and Lester Walker. The group was, has notably defined its own lane, merging food, fashion, music, art, and design, claiming both the beauty and grit from the streets with the aspiration and aesthetics of the finer things. Ghetto Gastro's interdisciplinary approach celebrates the Bronx as a driver of global culture. The crew masterfully blends influences from the African diaspora, global south ingredients, in the pulse of hip-hop to create offerings that address race, identity, and economic empowerment. Since launching in 2012, Ghetto Gastro has gone from hosting underground parties to spearheading large-scale brand campaigns and events with, with leading fashion designers, artists, and entrepreneurs. Their collaborators and partners, including figures like Virgil Abloh, R.I.P., Nike, Cartier, or Cartier, I don't know, and the the Serpentine, the Museum of Modern Art, and many more. During the onset of the pandemic in 2020, Ghetto Gastro prioritized Bronx grassroots initiatives and mutual aid in, in recognition for feeding their community. The group was nominated for the Bat Basque Culinary World Prize in 2021. Ghetto Gastro launched its namesake consumer foods, br consumer goods brand of pantry items inspired by ancestral ingredients. The collective released a custom line of kitchen appliances, Crux GG, C U R X G G, across Target stores nationwide, and recently launched their cookware line with William Sonoma. Black Power Kitchen is their first cookbook. I need to find this kitchen. This uh cookware line hold the phone period boo ghetto gastro this just hit like really hard that is the end of books and games and last but not least is vinyl technically there should only be one thing in this section but there is two because target just be hitting with the with the vinyl to be honest this actually did come from the black history month section there were specific vinyls in the black history month section and this one as soon as I saw it, knew I was getting it. Al Green has a place in my heart that cannot be moved. This is my mother's favorite artist. Let's Stay Together is an amazing song, but also a great album. I actually had, there was some songs on here that I had never heard. And the vinyl itself is beautiful. I believe it's called Mississippi Sun. 
it's it, it's on the screen. I just showed it to you, but like, look at the. Do you see that? Beautiful vinyl. I love that they make vinyl pretty these days. You know, I probably did it some in the past, but like, I think it feels it feels like they do it a lot more now. I do have a pretty large vinyl collection, most of which was inherited from my parents. So let's stay together has. Let's stay together. La la for you. So you're leaving. What is this feeling? Old time loving. I'm. I've never found a girl. How can you mend a broken heart, Judy? And it ain't no fun to me. And then we have our honorable mention that I actually found in the vinyl section, not the Black History Month section, but it was from Target. But Marvin Gaye number ones. Now everybody knows Marvin Gaye. Everybody knows Marvin Gaye. Uh, side one, let's get it on. Oh, baby. Let's get it on. All right. Uh, then we got Gotta Give It Up. Then we got When I Get That Feeling, you know, sexual healing. Sexual healing. It's good for me. What's going on? What's going on? I feel like I'm going to sing all these songs. Uh, Ain't nothing like the real thing, baby. Ain't nothing like the real thing. With Tammy Terrell. Too busy thinking about my baby. Ain't that particular. I heard it through the grapevine. Not much longer would you be mine, baby. Bet you wonder how I knew. I want you. Mercy, mercy me. Things ain't what they used to be. Oh, baby. Ugh. I love Marvin. All right. Inner City Blues. You're all that. You're all I need to get by. You're all I need to get by. And then I'll be doggone. But uh, that is, that com concludes my haul of the Target Black History Month collection. If I had to rate this on a scale from one to 10, it's knocking on 10, but I'm going to, I'm not, I, I don't know. I can't give it a full 10 because I feel like they could have had more types of things. So like, yes, they had the drinkware, but like, what about a plate or a bowl or like serveware or, um, you know, like things that you can keep out, like things that, because last year I, I, one of my favorite pieces from the collection last year was actually a vase that is currently sitting on my dining room table. And you'll see it in that video that I linked uh, in the beginning. But like more like houseware type, like house, like decor. They didn't have very much decor this year. And I really would have liked that. They did have a lot of artwork, but not like physical like pieces that you can set out. Like they had things to hang on the wall, but you know, like tchotchkes, little knickknacks and doodads. They did have coasters that I saw, but I did, they weren't, they didn't have them at my Target. I don't know if they were sold out or if they just didn't carry them. But yeah, so that is my only complaint is that they don't really have many or really any like decorative pieces other than actual art prints. That That's my only complaint. So for that reason, I'm going to give this year an eight. Last year was probably closer to a 10, but I didn't really even look as hard that time. I just found, like, it was easy for me to find the things because they were right in my face. But <clears throat> I'm going to give this year an 8. And that's nothing to shake a stick at, I would say. But there's still things that I might even go back for, to be honest. If they, because there was this specific mug that I'll put a screenshot of on the screen, but it's not available anywhere. And I don't know if it was ever actually going to be available. But if it becomes available, I'm getting it. Uh, but yeah. That's it. That is the end of this video. I hope you found this useful. I hope you saw something that interested you. If you are interested in any of these pieces, I say run to your nearest Target or download the Target, the Target app and, you know, scroll or even just go to the website uh, and it will be in your face. You will see Black History Month. You tap that and it will take you to all of their Black History Month collection. But yeah, this has been great for me and I'm still like really vibing with this jacket like I don't know this is really cute to me
but I feel like I'm rambling at this point. So thank you for making it to the end of this video. If you made it this far, comment down below what your favorite fleece was from the collection or if there was something that you saw that I did not get that you think I would love. Please comment that down below as well. Other than that, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and turn on that post notification bell so you never miss another video from me. But until next time, love y'all. Peace.